it is hard to pin down what racism actually is and when it began. Perhaps it is evident from the history of humanity, of brutal wars and secluded tribes, or it is a mere manifestation of ever-decreasing gap between the different groups of humanity. As the ethnicities and lineages mix into a single concept of race, on which they are just meager parts. Yet the essential question of racism is not in need of a definition to be answered. The different groups of men could be neatly put in the categories of race, some say. The years of biological processes and the divergence of genes in human subpopulations have rendered the humanity as mere amalgamation of different people, whose variations are evident not only from their mannerisms or their languages and accents, but from the very shape and structure of their physical self. The self itself which forms the token of identity is steeped within the classifier of race and forms the racial identity of the people. German philosopher Hegel wrote how men see their identity in others. The identity of a man comprises of two parts one by which he is, and one by which he loses his identity in the other. These form the perspective of both the right wing and what is not right wing. When a man sees someone else, he either sees in them something to be aware of, or a sense of self which manifests from a deep longing for someone else. The former allows men to forget his self and forms the base of all desires that are externalized. The latter forms the seat of all desires directed to the internal self, the identity. The first is the way of what is not right-wing. Entities, even the conscious ones, relate to the self as mere objects of experience, allowing a person to dive deep into the abyss of a loss of a sense of self. An interaction with the objects without separate consciousness recognized in essence, the man loses his own self of what it means to be alive and falls recursively into the pit of abject delusion. He becomes the experiencer, the consumer. The second is the way of the right. When objects of experience are imparted consciousness, the self sees identity of self in others falling recursively into the abyss of closure, where all ends to which the self is subjected to find no termination in objects that are desired. Such a path is deeply anti-hedonistic, but it is anti the sense of self as well, because without external objects, the consciousness of self itself makes no sense. Diversity of any kind allows a man to experience the qualities he does not possess as some things that are externalized, as objects to be experienced, relating the man to the other by a sense of trait. The man takes what he does not have, he desires what he lacks, and in a society with little divergences, the heart desires what is different and unique, searching for something that brings the passing moments of joy and sadness, pleasure and disgust that bring excitement to one's life. It makes someone feel alive because it proves their own consciousness by allowing them to be enjoyer of the self of others, whose differentiation from self makes it a good candidate for an externalized object. What a man does is what he becomes, or a similar rule from Pascal. The French philosopher rings true when the consumer himself starts becoming the commodity, but he loses his sense of self because of a lack of experience of it. The objectified world grounds him no peaceful place to mirror himself, but only the places to be like a commodity. The heart again desires what is unique. The self reasserts itself and seeks companionship with itself by subjectifying the significant other. Diversity adds a hurdle in that process. The mind rejects the claim of identity with what it sees as different and the pendulum readies itself to strike the other end. Such is the fear of humanity.